After living in Popayan for the better part of a month, we were finally on the road again, heading towards Ecuador. And Becky wound up having a Kickstarter bike all the time because her charging system was not exactly working. Quack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my charging system was no longer working. <laughs> Likely my stator got fried when my top end went. Matias wanted to push during my bike whenever we couldn't park on a hill. He had to do it a lot. He's a really good sport about it though. Te gusta viajando con nosotras? Es muy divertido para empujar las motos siempre. Bien para. <laughs> we made it to the border of Ecuador. Victory! At least Andrea's bike was running. Push starting and kick starting we can handle. And uh, the border at Ecuador was awesome. It was the easiest one we've done and it didn't cost us anything. The first thing we noticed was gas is extremely cheap. $1.48 a gallon. $1.48. And Ecuador is beautiful. A lot of it is very similar to Colombia, but there's some deserty, mountainy sections and some volcanoes and snow-capped mountains, which are gorgeous. And the roads are nice. A lot of very new, beautiful carreteras. And we had to pay a couple toll roads, like 10 cents, and then all the rest had the free lane the same way Colombia did. Sometimes on the right side, sometimes on the left side, and you have to dart across seven lanes of traffic to like <laughs> get around where you need to be. And there's a little bit of confusion, but hey, it's not that bad. Yeah, at least we don't have to pay for most of them. Also, Ecuadorian Satan. Yeah, we found this weird sculpture. And then later someone told us that its eyes glow red at night. Like, no joke, to like remind people to fear Satan, I think. One day we came across a little motocross track on the side of the road and stopped to watch people bumping over the jumps. On our way down towards Quito and Guayaquil, we stopped in Otavalo at a really rad market. They had a lot of cool artesanias and a lot of amazingly dressed locals. And they had really fun hats to try on. And some pretty great jewelry. My temporary passport that I'd gotten in Mexico was completely out of space for stamps. They only give you a few pages on an emergency passport and mine were completely full. So we were trying to haul ass to get to Guayaquil so I could go to my appointment. Yeah, you have to make a very precise appointment in order to get a new passport, like a week and a half in advance. So we made the appointment and then we had to rush, rush, rush all the way across Ecuador to get there. And we zoomed through Quito, the traffic is insane. We had to make a U-turn at one point and we couldn't find anywhere to turn around. So I was like, let's just go through here. Let's go through this pedestrian crosswalk through a buses only lane. And you know, motorcycles fit, but a police officer saw us do it and he didn't think it was that funny. And uh, he gave me this look when he pulled me over, like, are you, are you kidding me? Is this what you're doing? And I was just like, you know how hard it is to make a U-turn around here? And he let us go. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> After keto, we rode back into the countryside on our way to Guayaquil, and we saw a ton of really rad progressive signs that were saying like, agua es vida, like, water is life, and protect nature. And it's really cool. We actually also saw a sign that says education is for everyone. And that's really rad. Ecuador seems very progressive. In our haste past Quito, we totally failed to stop at the equator and take a cheesy <laughs> yeah. photo of ourselves saying we made it, but like, we passed the equator. Yeah, sorry guys, <laughs> none of that. As soon as we got to Guayaquil, we immediately went to a shop. We specifically went to a mechanic this time around when we were having charging system issues because we'd heard in Latin America they rewrap your stator with new copper wire rather than having to wait for the part to be shipped down from the US. So we were really excited when we got to the mechanic and they told us they could have our stairs rewrapped at an electrical shop close by and they'd be ready in two days. We were stoked. Better than the originals. More yeah. copper, more charging, more power. Voltage. We found an incredible couch surfer named Christina and she and her family let us stay there while we were waiting on repairs. <laughs> Christina's friend, Christian, super awesome and took us on a bicycle tour of Guayaquil and we got to see a bunch of crocodiles and giant tortoises and then went to hang out with some cool artists. Yeah, I think that was my favorite part. I had told Christian I really wanted to go to a modern art museum, but they don't have one in Guayaquil, so he took us to the street where all the artists live and they have their studios open where you can walk around and see all their cool art. We really liked this one guy, Ermel's art, and he invited us in for a drink and we ended up there all day. Christian also told us about the Iguana Park, and it is awesome. They're seriously everywhere, walking around on the grass, walking around the sidewalk, 
crawling all over statues. <laughs> Right outside the Iguana Park, there's a big church with a zillion TVs, like at least a zillion, all over the place. Giant flat screen TVs inside a church. While waiting on our bikes, we had to take a couple taxis around town, and Ecuador is infamous for its stab cabs. A lot of people have been held up at gunpoint or knife point, and there was a whole issue about it, so they've resolved it by having specific cabs with orange license plates and cameras inside and a panic button. So whenever you get in a cab in Ecuador, you check for all those things first and then supposedly nothing happens. In usual Latin American fashion, they said it would be two days until our bikes were fixed and then two more days and then the shop had messed up and wrapped my stator incorrectly so they had to send it back to get wrapped again. Unfortunately, they had already put the incorrectly wrapped stator into my bike and tried to start it and burned up my pulse generator, which now meant that I needed a new one from the US. But we had some ideas about what we were going to do in the meantime. <laughs> 